Hi everyone, welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa. I am The Crafty Author and welcome to my quilting studio. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this adorable uh, custom rag quilt that I just finished making for a customer on Etsy. I'm using my Studio 2 cutter from AccuQuilt to cut my rag quilt squares and I am using an eight and a half inch rag quilt die um, by AccuQuilt as well. And I'm able to cut up to four layers of flannel on this, as you can see here. I love this machine because it allows me to cut lots and lots of layers of fabric at one time. So when you're working with minky or flannel or any of a thicker fabric, you don't want to cut as many layers um, you don't want to cut a lot of thick layers. So you can definitely cut, like I said, four, four layers here. You can, the most I think I've ever cut on this is six, but it's not recommended to do that with a, with a flannel or a minky, just because it clogs up your, your dye. So even after I do this, I'm still going to have to clean off my dye. And so I'm almost done cutting this, but I was able to cut all of my squares, my flannel squares in about probably seven minutes and that was from start to finish so all my squares only took about seven minutes to cut out that way and that's why I absolutely love this machine okay so I get asked a lot about um, cutting batting squares on the AccuQuilt and I absolutely do cut my batting squares with my AccuQuilt cutter as you can see here um, I have just a regular six and a half inch square um, that I put my batting on and I use that as the batting on the inside for my rag quilts. And I do use it with the eight and a half inch rag quilt die. Now, if I'm working with a bigger one, like say a 12 inch um, rag quilt die, then I would use my 10 inch square to cut that. So it would just be bigger. So you just um, alternate and make it, you know, adapt to what you're needing it for. So this one, I'm cutting all those little squares, 63 of them to be exact. And that took me no time to do, as you can see. I made this custom quilt label for the back of the quilt. Okay, so here I'm sandwiching the um, pieces together. So I'm putting the backing down first, then the batting, and then my cotton top there. And I am using 505 spray to hold everything together. And I find that 505 works great. Once I have everything sandwiched, now I'm gonna start chain piecing this and I'm quilting the pieces as you can see. So I'm just making an X on the, um, on the actual pieces themselves. So that is how I quilt those. You can use decorative stitches or you can use a straight stitch to do that. And when I'm doing it, I usually use a straight stitch because it goes a little faster. Okay, so now I've started on the opposite end and I'm just gonna go ahead and chain piece these as well. So you can see that X forming there that's quilting the actual um, main fabric of our quilt. And so I just chain piece that and that just goes really, really fast and I love it. Now I'm gonna cut the pieces apart and stack them so that when I go to sew all these blocks together, it will come together so much easier. All right, so we are now ready to start assembling our rag quilt. So I'll, I'm going to just take one of my main squares and one of my secondary squares and I am going to put them, the back sides facing each other. And then I am just going to put them here. You can pin these if you want to, and I do recommend doing that when you're attaching the rows, 
but even if you're just doing the blocks, if you want to do that, then you're more than welcome to. Um, I typically don't. I just sew the, the blocks together. Um, and so that's all I'm going to do at this point. Okay, so you wanna trim up any loose threads that you may have just lingering around here. But I am going to attach this bottom one first. And so I'm gonna flip this one facing me like this so that the design here is facing the opposite direction of me right now. Then I am going to take one of my alternating rows that looks like this that started with the polka dots on the ends. And I am going to put these together. And I want to make sure that that is going to turn out correctly. And it should. So when I flip that up, we should be good to go. So I'm gonna start from this end. And what I like to do is I like to pin these. Um, Penny, I find really, uh, sorry, I've got flannel fuzz up my nose. Um, pinning helps us to keep the seams locked and lined up better. And also helps us to keep the quilt from being different lengths because we can't really trim this down and square it up when we're done. So we have to be kind of careful how we do this. So I'm just gonna pop a pin in on the edge like that. And then I am going to start pinning my rows. Now, because this is already fringed, um, the AccuQuilt fringed this for me already, I need to be careful not to sew these into the little square or into anything. So I wanna make sure that those are not crazy. <laughs> So, and then I just pin them. So I do nest my seams together on a rag quilt. Let's see if I can show you. You'll see that you have, you have seam here and a seam here. So what I do is I push this seam that way and I push my bottom seam the opposite direction. And I just do that with my finger. It's, it's pretty easy to do, but it helps everything to line up. So, and again, we want to be careful when we're sewing not to sew these. So like this, I have this pinned, but I'm not too worried about it because I'm going to pull this pin out when I get to it. But I want to make sure that this is not going to be, or that won't be underneath, because if it is, then it'll, it'll sew that little fringe piece down. So... I'm gonna just continue to do this real fast. It doesn't take long to um, assemble this once you get going. And then I'm going to start stitching right here, right along, right underneath my little cuts here, um, about a half an inch in, and that's what we're gonna do.
Okay, now that the quilt has been all assembled and put together, what you'll wanna do next is go around the edge, around the whole entire quilt. And you can use this with either a straight stitch or you can use a serpentine stitch, which is like a squiggle stitch or a zigzag stitch or any decorative stitch that you'd like to use around your quilt. So I prefer to do um, like a serpentine stitch and that's exactly what I'm gonna do with this one. And I'm just gonna go around and stitch this raw edge uh, down so that when it starts to rag, it'll all be um, together and there it won't be able to come apart at all. So that is what I am going to do. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to follow me on social media, the links are down below in the description box. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you'd like to share it, please do so because caring is sharing. Don't forget to click the little bell. You'll get notified each and every time that I upload an awesomely cool new video. And keep on crafting. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.